Hello, this is Darcy, the dog trainer, owner and head trainer of Communi K9 Training and Behavioral Counseling, where it's my passion and purpose to connect dogs and people. Now, puppies are like little piranhas. They're harmless to look at, but if you reach down to touch one, you're likely to come away bloodied up, punctured, and wondering what the hell happened. So let's talk today about some strategies to minimize the biting that puppies do and teach them not to bite as hard when they do bite. Now, quick disclaimer, all puppies go through that biting phase. It lasts anywhere from about two to four months after you get them. So usually by the time they're about five to six months, they've outgrown the worst part of it. So it is a normal process that puppies go through. However, one of the things we do need to do is to teach puppies to be really gentle with their mouths because they just don't understand that humans don't interact the same way that other dogs do. So let's talk about five simple strategies to help reduce the biting that you get from your puppy and to get them to be a little softer when they do. Strategy one, use a really sharp ouch. So when your puppy puts their mouth on you, ouch, just a really sharp sound to let them know that that was really uncomfortable. Now there's two important factors here. One is that when you do your ouch, you can't pull away. Puppies will chase any kind of movement. So if you pull away at the same time, your puppy's going to just chase the movement rather than hearing the ouch and changing their, their action. So that's the first thing. The second thing, and it leads to number two on the list of things to do, and that is make sure your puppy isn't too wound up to begin with. So when puppies get really overexcited, they get really bitey as well. So some worse than others. And you can ouch them all day long, but if they're too wound up, it actually, that ouching will make them worse. It'll actually make them bite harder because they've gone over the line of where they can actually think rationally through what they're doing. So when you're playing with your puppy, make sure that you take lots of little breaks. So if you're ch throwing a ball for them, generally you're, you're pretty safe with that one because as they run to get the ball, they diffuse some of the tension and excitement that they're building in their body. But if you're wrestling with them or you're playing with a toy, like um, t playing tug of war with a toy, make sure you just do it for a few seconds at a time and then take a break and give your puppy, take a little, when I say take a break, I mean pause for a few seconds or even stop, let them have the toy, let them run away with it for a minute, let them decompress a little bit. And then when they come back and play, they'll have reset. So that's strategies one and two. So ouching when they bite you and any pressure. So even if they just do a little bit of pressure with their teeth, ouch, we want to teach them that humans are so sensitive. So we're looking to teach them not only not to bite, but also when they bite, they need to be very, or when they put their teeth on you, they need to be very, very sensitive because people are very, very sensitive. So that's really important. And the second thing is you make sure they don't get too wound up when you're playing with them because otherwise the more overexcited they get, the harder they bite and the harder it is to get them to come out of it. The third thing, I would recommend minimizing the amount of wrestling you do with your puppy, like with your hands. So getting in there and playing with them with your hands, of course, they're just going to come back and bite your hands. So rather than that, I would suggest using toys. So using a toy as an intermediate as you're playing with your puppy. So maybe a rope toy or, um, you know, those little skinnies, um, flat squeaky toy things, something like that, that the puppy can hang on to one part of it, you can hang on to the other part. And that minimizes the chance that your puppy's just going to grab onto you because there's something more interesting to hold on to. And number four, so giving your puppy lots of chewy things, bones, bully sticks, stuffed Kongs. So give them things to focus their mouths and their chewing on. Especially puppies start chewing, uh, teething at about an age of depending on the puppy, but on average around four months of age. And that teething goes on until about five and a half at latest six months. So you've got this period of a couple months where their teeth are, are, the puppy teeth are falling out, the adult teeth are coming in, and they're going to need something to direct their chewing onto. So make sure they have access to lots of delicious bones and chewy things so that it's not directed onto you or your shoes or anything else inappropriate. 
Number five is limit your petting of your puppy to when they're a lot calmer and not completely wound up. For a puppy, anytime you put their, your hand on their body, it's fair game for them to turn around and bite you because you've probably noticed when dogs interact with each other, they don't pet each other. <laughs> when they're interacting, they're wrestling and they're playing and they're doing something interactive and not just hanging out with each other. If they're gonna be loving and, and affectionate with each other, they might lick one another uh, or they might just cuddle, but they don't actually put their hands or their paws onto each other because that means play. So having said that, you also wanna make sure that your puppy isn't overtired because a puppy who's overtired will get really rambunctious and can actually just like little kids that get too wound up it's impossible to bring them back down so sometimes the best thing to do is just pop them in their crate and if they crash within a couple of minutes of being in their crate and fall fast asleep you know that that was the problem they were just way too overtired and just needed a nap time so there you have it there's five simple strategies that you can use to help minimize your puppy's biting and to teach your puppy not to bite as hard when they do. Because teaching bite inhibition is as important as teaching your puppy not to put their teeth on your skin at all. So thanks for tuning in this week. Please share this video around so that others can benefit from it as well. And I look forward to connecting with you next week.